I was just like, nobody is going to believe us. And nobody's going to believe this story. We got told that he's been shot and that he was bleeding. The cemetery at Yundamu is not far. We'll get here the gunshot. I remember saying, we need to record this. They didn't tell family nothing. They just sped straight past. We'll record the impact this has on our family. They took a really innocent boy away from us. And on the community. This community has suffered. It has been shattered. We will not let his name be forgotten. Or his story forgotten. Mujia has been kicked apart by people who didn't know him and wished to put him at trial for his own death. The Yundamu community is a really beautiful place. Everybody know one another and support one another. My sister and I flew into the Northern Territory to Alice to then go out to Yundamu for our grandfather's funeral. It was really packed because the passing of our grandfather was quite heartbreaking to the whole of the community. That day at the funeral, Everybody gathered. There was about 800 people. Kumunje told me that he wanted to be arrested after the funeral. The service itself went for hours. And after it finally concluded, as we were driving, we came across Kumunje and I remember saying to mum, oh, like, hey, do you, wanna, do you wanna see if he wants to get in the car with us to go out to the cemetery? But, the car was already full, so we left it and sort of just waved goodbye to him. <laughs> sort of a goodbye now. I know it was the last one. to school together like in Adelaide yeah, and finished up over there and just came back and just got initiated in our Aboriginal way. Yeah, Kumanja was really a shy little boy, shy and didn't talk much, but he loved kids. He, he loved kids and he's, he was still a kid himself as well. It was always a cartoon show that we'd watch when we were younger and it was called Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold. <laughs> and it kind of always reminds me of him, <laughs> which is nice. We're at Yundamu and we're at the um, Red House when the bad incident happened. Yeah. The cemetery at Yundamu is not far. We could hear the gunshot. One person came running to the cemetery and told a community police officer. That's when we rushed back to see what was happening. And then when we asked who it was, my family was panicking to see if he was okay. Sort of just started coming into community and Across the road from the pool, I just saw um, sort of all my aunties and nanas, and they were crying, they were in hysterics. They couldn't say anything, they just were saying, he's dead, he's dead, the police shot him, he's dead. And I was like, okay, like, you know, everybody, let's just calm down, let's calm down, let's see if it's the truth. So we gathered up at our place, and then we went to, went to police station. I didn't know what to do, but I remember speaking to my sister and saying, 
should I should I live stream this? So we didn't know what's happening. We got told that he's been shot and that he was bleeding and at the house there's three gun shells. Just so it's there, just so people know what's happening. We've been asking the police to just come out and tell us if he's okay and what's happening, we don't know. With Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and with our um, experiences, there is no evidence that it happened. People are so quick to think that it doesn't, that it doesn't happen. All of the medical staff from Yundamu left this morning, so there's no one there here to give him medical attention right now so we don't even know if he's alive. Apparently there's an ambulance coming from the town 40 minutes away but I don't I don't know. It's been four hours and we've still not heard anything. We've been asking the police to come out and just give us an update. We just want to know if he's alive, if he's well and absolutely nothing. Look, everyone's just sitting, calm. Nothing. So the police have just gone two different cars and an ambulance. They didn't tell us anything. They're just going straight to the airstrip. They didn't tell family nothing. They just sped straight past, straight out the back here. They've been run straight in their cars, police cars. Lower, they should have even let his mother go with them. They're going straight to the fucking hospital. How are we just going to go straight to the airstrip without even telling mother? Um, nothing still. The police We out. couldn't see anything. They went real quick and by the time we got there, we just saw the two police coming back, the two cars. So no one no one knows if he's safe, if he's if he's alive, if he's dead, if he's in critical condition, but he's just gone in that plane. Now apparently that plane came from Darwin, but we don't know. We... He's gone. Yeah, he's, he's gone. I'm just trying to tell everyone to go home because there's nothing we can do right now. It was maybe about seven in the morning. I could just hear my mom and my grandmother crying. And I remember laying there and thinking, oh, that's not good. <laughs> Sorry, business started. But if you go house from house for the significant family members to check in on them and see how they're going and you just cry together. So I remember talking, I think, to Eddie and Lottie and being like, oh, like I can't believe he didn't make it. You know, he went to Alice Springs and he still didn't. And Eddie said, no, he didn't. He never went in that plane. The police officer went in that plane. He ended up passing away here in Yundamu, in the police station, which just upset me so much more because if they were his last hours, he would have been hearing us yelling for him. He was completely disrespected. His body and his final moments were completely disrespected and they were robbed of him and the and his family and community when we were right there. I was just like nobody is gonna believe us and nobody's gonna believe this story. And people are just gonna say that he was another black kid, that he was just another naughty black kid that sort of deserved this. And so I just remember saying, we need to record this and we need to record the impact that this has on our family and on the community because we can't let him just be painted like that. Hello everyone, I just wanted to say thank you for all the love and support that I've been receiving. I've been overwhelmed with messages um, and the amount of shares that I'm getting on my live feeds. Um, I was speaking to a police officer today down at the police station and one of the fellas was talking to me and he said, yeah, like we've got, we've got, um, we're going to be here for riot control. We've got, you know, tear, tear gas and a number of options as if like people were doing that. No one is here rioting. We all just want justice. We just want to know what's happening and why the police officer drew his gun and shot 
my cousin. And then today, I drove past the house, of the crime scene, and there's literally like, there was officers, there was two officers I saw standing with big shotguns. Like, how ridiculous is that? Like, oh, like how you bring like shotguns into the community when like someone just passed away from getting shot like by a gun like and the community's not doing anything we're not rioting we're not doing anything we're just like sitting patiently everyone's like calm and peaceful we just like we don't want any more people getting hurt we want to be safe as australia we can't keep letting this police brutality happen we need to we need to stand united together um that's all i gotta say tonight I remember my videos, like the videos got so much traction and everybody was just so outraged of what happened in Yindamu and to Gumunje. Even though it was so devastating, what followed after that night was just so powerful. To watch everybody in their communities make signs and put together marches and rallies in support of him and saying that they stood with Yundamu and they were also calling for justice for Kumanje. It was such a bittersweet moment because it was for all the wrong reasons but it was all the right actions that followed. We are in mourning, that we're in pain, now the whole world is behind us. To stop, stop killing our children. Our heart is open and we want to thank everybody who's been supporting us, the family here in Yindamu. Saturday night was a tragic day for the Northern Territory. 28-year-old Constable Zachary Rolfe has been charged with the 19-year-old's murder. Okay, when you're ready. My name's Robin Jabananga Granite. I'm the uh, grandfather of Mr. Kumande Walker. This case is important to Walbury people because Kumande Walker was a loved family member. It is justice that we want. When a person's life is taken away, the person who took that life must face justice. If we do see justice, I'd, I'd be really happy, not only for myself, but for the family and for the rest of the uh, Indigenous people around Australia that we've seen justice for the very first time. If we make this right for Kumanje, so can the others, you know? If other families are fighting for their justice, he won't die in vain and we will not let his name be forgotten or his story forgotten and as a family and as a community we will continue fighting. We will fight all the way until the end. We will fight for justice. I'm looking at all the juries while I'm there. Last few weeks, I've been looking, studying them. It's going to be up to them to decide what they're going to do, what it's going to be, and the outcome. Those juries have got the biggest question mark right now. This court is, it means very, very important so that it's always remembered that Common J Walker is within us, you know, within our heart, always remembering him, always. After five exhausting weeks, we have finally heard the jury's decided verdict.
I just say, when? We are going to get justice. When? Karinjala, more time. No guns. No guns in the rural remote community. We don't want no guns. Enough is enough. It's gonna stop. Authorized by L. Baldwin, get up, Brisbane.